Happy New Year, and welcome to Mount Vernon Place United Methodist Church in Baltimore, Maryland. Today, we celebrate the new year by focusing and looking forward on new beginnings. We all need it. We arrive at the dawn of a new year. A year from now, what would you like to be looking back on with gratitude? What might God bring about in our lives in 2023? Pastor Rod explores this with a sermon entitled, What Are Your Plans? Based on Jeremiah 29, verses 11 through 14. May the word bless you and encourage you for the week and the year ahead. The message from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 29. Verses 11 through 14. I know the plans I have in mind for you, declares the Lord. They are plans for peace, not disaster, to give you a future filled with hope. When you call me and come and pray to me, I will listen to you. When you search for me, yes, search for me with all of your heart, you will find me. I will be present for you, declares the Lord, and I will end your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have scattered you, and I will bring you home after your long exile, declares the Lord. The Lord Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So this is a well-known passage. You all right? Okay. Well-known passage, especially for preachers. Preachers seem to like this passage, but I I, I think uh, I've heard a lot of people referring to this one along the way. Um, And... uh, They're God's words to people in exile. So in friends, as as Yvette said, and other people have said, you know, as we all say, (laughs) we're experiencing exile. You know, the whole Southwest thing, that's just one thing uh, that we've had. You know, the weather, zero or minus degrees. uh, That was just, you know, that's recent. You know, upticks in people getting sick, that's another thing. Um, Just a whole lot going on, right, in the world. Ukraine, plus many other places in the world where there is, there's bloodshed and, and division and wars, and we could just go on and on about all those things. So the, these words, these are powerful words. These are words from Jeremiah, but he is a channel. He's like what we were saying earlier. He is carrying God's word. He's a, he is a light, you know, to the exiles in the, those times thousands of years ago, but also a light to us who are feeling exiled these days and as we begin 2023. And so I want... I really am looking at this verse, especially the first verse, verse 11, as my verse for the year. So we're beginning the new year. So here it is. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. So we're going to spend a little time with this one, this time, this verse. So it starts with the word no. The Hebrew, Hebrew word for no is yada. You remember the Seinfeld show? Yada, 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 yada. Yes. <laughs> this word signifies the many ways of gaining information through the senses, the many ways we know, not just knowing thinking, this is knowing in our hearts, in our guts, in our souls, in our, in our beings, right? This is, that's how God is. God is that fullness of knowing. 
Uh, and it's also being acquainted with other people, knowing the other, this other, the other person, really knowing who they are, coming into their, you know, kind of intuiting who they are, knowing what they need. Um, describes being uh, something about knowing what is good, what is not good, what is what is helpful, what is not helpful. It's also used euphemistically in the Bible, need to say this, to describe sexual intercourse. That's where Seinfeld comes into it. But the whole idea of knowledge, of knowing us, sexual intercourse would be that intimate knowledge, right? That's what it's referring to there. So the Bible is using this word to say that God's total knowledge of everything in creation, God knows, right? Uh, nothing can be hidden from God. And one that has that kind of knowledge not only knows us, but knows what we need. So when it starts out with, I surely I know, surely I know, just those words. God knows us. God knows what's happening. God knows what's going on. God knows what's how hard this is for so many, you know. How, how we feel how, how we feel separated. God knows this. The second word is plans. I know the plans. Several meanings of that word, which is hashav in Hebrew, but they're all around the idea of something new. Something new. God knows the plans, which is, has to do with God knows that there's something new that's coming in. New ideas, new purposes. Th these are all the translations of that, of that plans part. Plans, purposes, ideas. God has new plans, new purposes, ideas for us. God knows what knows us and knows the plans for us. So God totally knows new ideas for us. But these aren't ideas cast in concrete. These aren't like, here is the plan written out. Point, you know, here it is. It's not, it's not like that. These are flexible plans. These are godly plans. Adjusting to what is going on plans. Even as circumstances change, God's plan is continuing because God has a plan but the plan isn't set out like you're going to do this and this, go here and go there. It isn't like that. It's it's God is always wanting the best for us. God's goal is that we become who we are meant to be in the image of Christ. The goal doesn't change, but the plans can change. Sort of like the message is the same, but whether it comes across through Zoom or you know, live or Facebook or doesn't matter, right? All the means that we do things these days. It's still God's message coming through. The goal doesn't change, but the plans are new every day. God is full of surprises. God is an eternal inventor. So God totally knows the new plans God has for us. But the word really is not has for us. We translate it that way in English because that's what makes sense. But in Hebrew, the verse really says, I know the plans that I plan for you. It uses the same word, but it changes it from a noun to a verb in the second one. I know the plans that I'm planning for you. I know the ideas that I idea for you. I know the purposes that I'm purposing for you. So God totally knows the new plans, purposes God has for us, new ideas. The next part is to prosper you and not to harm you. Prosper is the word shalom. Isn't that nice? Primarily means peace, of course, but it also has the meanings of perfect, complete, whole, prosperity, health, wellness, safety. It's a whole sense of things. 
It's the way we hear Chad talk about how he relates to people. It's a, it come, coming from a, a shalom point of view, not just the parts, but kind of looking at the whole. That's what God is doing. That's what God wants for us. Wholeness. But since shalom is coming out of the Hebrew world, it's not something that we have. It's something that, that we experience. It's a relationship. That's the kind of shalom that God wants for us is, is to experience God in relationship, to experience wholeness in relationship. So I totally know the new, I, the new purposes I purpose for you. New purposes to bring you shalom and not to harm you. Literally, this should say, and not for evil. The juxtaposition of good and evil is here. This is like the tree of uh, the knowledge of good and evil. That's where the, these words are first used in Genesis. I want good, God wants good for us, not evil, to bring us shalom, not harm, not something that's against us, not something that's going to hurt us, because God is not vengeful. God is not malicious. God is not out to try to hurt us. God does not have it in for us. God is a God of holy grace, compassion, and care. God has no plan to do you evil in 2023. God has plans for shalom and not for evil. Um, in this verse, God tells us not only that God has no plans to harm us, but that God's purposes will keep us from even self-inflicted harm, that you not harm yourself. Sometimes we're our own worst enemies, we, you know. You know, we beat ourselves down. We, 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 we see ourselves as less than we are. We don't really love ourselves. We don't really res even respect ourselves sometimes. You know, we encourage others, but we don't do the same for ourselves. God is saying, what I want for you, I want you to want for you. <laughs> I want you to experience this. I totally know the new ideas I purpose for you new ideas, new plans, new purposes to bring you shalom and not to bring you evil. Purposes to give you a future with hope. That's the last part of this phrase, a future with hope. So God has two goals in mind for us, a future and, and a future with hope, a future and hope. That's the end of this is, okay, New ideas, new plans, new purposes, shalom, not evil, so that you have a future with hope. Now, the word future is akharit. Sometimes it's neat to hear the words. Akharit in Hebrew. This is a really unusual word. In fact, I didn't realize this until I was studying this this week. <laughs> Uh, what's unusual about this word is it literally means afterward or backward. This is the word for future, okay, but it means afterward or backward. So how can a word meaning backward be about the future? Except if you're Michael J. Fox and it's back to the future. Okay, I got it. Okay, I got you. We're not in the DeLorean. <laughs> So a commentator, H.W. Wolf, says that the Hebrew concept of time is like a man rowing a boat. You picture this. He sees where he has been, but the future is toward his back. He backs into the future. We can't see the future. We can see what's behind us. Right? We can, in other words, we are looking, what's in front of us is what was behind us. Does that make, this is confusing maybe. What's coming is, is in back of us. So this is, this is the meaning. This is the theology. This is what we're supposed to get with this. God 
sets our course because only God can see what's behind us. Secondly, we have as our guide the course we have been following. In other words, we're supposed to look backwards because we're supposed to remember, look at all the ways God has led us in the past. This is what we, this is what this word is pointing us towards. Think about all the things that have happened and continue to win through your life, how you got here. That past, that um, movement is going to continue. And you're going to need to trust because you can't see what's in behind you. But God can. You see. We see the past because we are facing it. No wonder our history with God is so important. It's not just about where we've been, but it helped, it gives us a, 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 a clue. See, time is all connected in the Hebrew thinking. And it can be for us too. This isn't just a, okay, yesterday was that day. 2022, this is 2023. In, in God's way, it's not quite like that. We're experiencing, we're, 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 we're all, we're, we're like inhabiting time. And what was past is also present and then it's, it's going to be part of the future. So if we're backing into the future, we have to trust the guide, you, you see? Because we're not the guide. That's where faith comes in. God is moving us into the future. So um, we can't see where we're going, but God can see where we're going. That's what this passage is about here, friends. We really don't see where we're going. We can see where we've been. God has been faithful all the way through. Now it's to trust God to take us then to the next place, you know, where we're going next. So much of our lives are consumed with this. You know, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? How much money do I need? How, you know, retirement savings. Maybe that's because I'm in this world. <laughs> I hear a lot about retirement. What, you know, what does it mean, right, to, to, to plan all the time? When we put plans and future together that we're, we're used to thinking that way but god is turning this or this passage is turning this a little bit it's not just about looking ahead god no has has our 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 backs <laughs> literally the course of our life is going to emerge from our past I look around at, at some of your faces and see your names, and, and I think about your past and how faithful God has been and how good God is and how God has seen you through a lot of stuff. That is what, we're, what we can hold on to as we're, as we're backing into the future. It's like floating down a river with your head upstream, trusting that God will lead you around the rocks and the eddies and the stuff that's in there, you know, the logs and stuff. And finally, God's goal for us is to give us hope. Hope in the Bible is really about trust and confident expectation. It's a little different than we think of hope as more like a wish Biblical hope is a confident expectation that God will fulfill what God promises. That everything that God that has been said in this verse is going to, we, we can trust it. God is trustfully going to guide us into an unseen future with strong and confident expectation. So here's the whole verse. God totally knows the new ideas that God purposes for you. 
Purpose is to bring you shalom and not to bring you evil. And to guide you into the future with confident expectation. These are strong and deep words. Expressing the heart of God. This, I believe, is the heart of God right here. Which is continually opening us towards new ideas and purposes that are always for us and not against us. If God is for us, who is against us, says Paul, quoting this passage probably. While all the time God is guiding us forward to where we can't yet see, just as God has done in the past, that we can see. So be confident. God is confident in you. And God will see to it that it happens. So you can smile. God has this. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. If the people of Mount Vernon Place United Methodist Church may be of service to you, please email us at mvpumcbaltimore at gmail.com. But for now, may the Lord bless you and keep you until we can meet again. God be with you.